hello guys welcome back to our channel we are so excited to have you again we're still giving you update on what the reactions of politicians mostly lawmakers are in respect to the meeting that was held by southern governors and the resolutions that they came up with don't forget that one of the resolution was actually restructuring and that is what and most of the senators and lawmakers are really, really hampering on. The likes of Lawan have spoken about it, who is the senior president. And even the speaker of the House of Representatives, talking about Femi Bajabe Amela, they have all reacted. Some ex-governors who are now, you know, senators also have responded. We are going to pick some of the words that they have to say and uh, we look at it uh, holistically considering the position of things and some of the reasons that they have given uh, which uh, they feel that their step is uh, a negative one especially considering the fact that nigeria is in a situation like it is right now so let's start off with the senior president that's ahmed lawan and get to hear what he told nigerians and right now he has faulted the call for restructuring and he according to him he said i believe that as leaders especially those of us who are elected into office should not be at the forefront of calling for this kind of thing restructuring why that's the question he went for i said because even if you are a governor you are supposed to be working hard in your state to ensure that this restructuring you are calling for at the federal level you have done it in your state as well what you may accuse the federal government of what Ever it is, you may also be accused of the same thing in your own state. So, we are supposed to ensure that we have a complete and total way of ensuring that our system at the federal, state, and even local government level works for the people. We must allow people to participate in governance so that whoever feels he has something to offer to make Nigeria better does so freely without any let or hindrances. That was the word of the senior president. He further said again that he said that the president is reaching out to all the stakeholders. And I believe that as leaders, particularly those of us who are elected at all levels of government, we should avoid partisanship. We should avoid regionalism. We are all leaders and we are in this together. The solution to our challenges must come from us, regardless of what level of government we are, whether at the federal, state, or local government level. I believe that Nigeria is going to come out of this challenge stronger. That was what he had to say. Femi Bajama Biamela also made a statement. He said, if the truth be told, we all have equal share in the blame for what is happening right now all right let's also look at another group of people that's another another lawmaker i'm talking about here who has taken out time to talk about the issue of restructuring coming from the southern governors you get to hear his own opinion also he's actually currently in the senate and he is a chairman senate committee on agriculture before now he was uh, he, he yeah, he's now the his chairman Senate Committee on Agriculture. Talking about Abdullahi Adamu, he is from APC uh, Nasarawa State. Now let's get to hear what he had to tell Nigerians about the issue of restructuring. Hey, and don't forget also that he has also been a two-time governor of Nasarawa State. Let's look at what he has to say. And according to Adamu, he said that the recent meeting of the Southern Governors Forum is an act of betrayal of the trust Nigerian repose in them. Each governor's pledged and swore to an oath, and they emphasized loyalty to the sovereignty of this nation. They also pledged their loyalty to the president of the country. That's their oath of office. Whilst we accept the fact that we have freedom of association and freedom of expression as, as citizens, they have failed to express their views through the right channel. They are members of the National Council of State. Every governor is a member of the National Council of State. It also includes former presidents who are still living. There is no better forum at this level to take a joint decision that, than 
such a forum. The fact that they have taken a decision as a divisive move does not speak well of their intention. I feel it is a betrayal of trust. I think they are just playing to the gallery. What they are saying is not new. Those things have become like broken records, saying the same thing over and over again. Why can't they come to the appropriate bodies, which is the National Assembly, to project their ideas? They have members in the National Assembly who are representing them. If they have an issue that is so important as that which borders on the constitution of the country, they should go there and express their grievances. We would say, sit, debate it, and see how best we can come out of it. They can't be Nigeria if everyone wants to have things happen in his or her own way. There is a constitution and there is a framework that we are supposed to operate as governors. To go outside, it is a betrayal of their order of office. Each of them talking there, if you take a look at what is happening in their individual state, they cannot in all honesty and good conscience challenge Buhari. Hmm, that's what also he has to say. Now, don't forget that yesterday also, um, the director of Voice of Nigeria, Osita uh, Okechuku, also warned Nigerians. I, I, I had, if you go through our feed, you're going to see exactly what he had to say. He had also warned Nigerians uh, to be weary of that thing by some leaders to hoodwink them into looking away from the real issue, which is the issue of, uh, you know, insecurity and all of that. Now, as much as what these guys are saying seems to make a great deal of sense, but I believe that the reason why a child will leave his father's house and start hugging, hugging uh, bread and pure water on the street is because the father has failed in his responsibility to take care of him and provide everything he wants. They were, there are a lot of issues which is disturbing the country right now. And severally, if you are familiar with what is going on in different states, you will notice that most of them have been crying. For example, if you look at the governor of Benue State, though he's not part of the meeting that was held in the southern part, you realize that he cries out almost every day. On those state, the same thing. Talking about also River State, you talk about uh, Abia State, that most of them have been crying out considering what is going on in the country so much pressure is on them and despite the fact that they keep crying out there seems not to be a visible response that can immediately put everything under control and hence the emergency of that meeting that was held whereby they also say well if the federal government is not doing anything let us go and tell them in a unanimous way what we have at heart don't forget that when after this meeting had held that some senators from the south were fully in support of them and they said all what they said was absolutely right but at the same time it's important as men of wisdom for us to think the other way because my people say if as you are talking to the hawk you have to also talk to the chicken as much as these guys are willing to, you know, are demanding for restructuring and are seeking for legal framework to eat, uh, the review of constitution and all of that, it's quite interesting. But let's also look inside. What are the governors doing for Nigerians who are under them? Are they better than the present day government? Just like Lawan, I'm not taking sides with Lawan. I'm saying the truth because I feel that the truth is, or let me say, I'm giving you my opinion because I feel that my opinion also can help out here. It's important that we, when we talk about this issue of restructuring, it should be a dual thing. You know, dual restructuring. We are restructuring at the federal level. We are also restructuring at the state level. If possible, we can restructure at the local government level also. Because as much as they are going to restructure and give you power over your state, it is no, wouldn't be uh, in the best interest of the citizen you are governing for you to begin to carry yourself as an emperor, ruling over everybody, refusing to allow people even to castigate you. Because if they give them all the powers to even make use of their resources and remit a little part of it to the federal government, don't you think that some of them will begin to go against their opposition? The choicest person, the people which they want, will be the one that will be in the office. You will realize that the legislature will be working in their favor. The, how do they call them? The uh, uh, judiciary will be working in their favor. Even the police, if we have state police now, it will be working in their favor. Why? Because... 
you know, they, 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 they have the power over all of them. So as we are thinking of restructuring from the federal level, we are also advising, I'm suggesting that they should be restructuring financial autonomy mostly because this restructuring thing really boils down to financial autonomy. Give the state financial autonomy. Give some of the key uh, offices or key arms of government in the state financial autonomy so that anything that the government does which is totally against them, they can kick against it without fear of not receiving their salary, not receiving their allowance and all of that. And that's just the little I can say. Let's go to our...